Hello and welcome to the answer series Grade 12 Maths Literacy video on Simple Interest Part 1. In this video, we will be exploring the concept of simple interest, which is the first topic in Module 3 Finance, Unit 6 Interest of the Grade 12 Maths Literacy curriculum. These videos will be based on the answer series Grade 12 Maths Literacy 3-in-1 Study Guide. As we progress through the slides, you can keep track of where we are in the book by looking at the page number tag reference here. So let's get started. In order to complete this module, you need to be able to work with percentages, you need to be able to draw graphs, and you need to understand the basics of simple interest. If you need a refresher on these skills, you can turn to your Grade 12 Maths Literacy 3-in-1 book for percentages, see page 20, for graphs, you can turn to Patterns and Relationships on page 29, or alternatively, you can turn to your Grade 11 Mass Literacy 3-in-1 book on Interest for page 87. The aim of Simple Interest 1, this video, and Part 2, the next video, is to understand financial terminology, to be able to calculate and work with Simple Interest, and to draw and interpret Simple Interest graphs. So, financial terminology. Interest is the amount of money that is earned from depositing money, and this will be for any kind of investments, savings accounts, RAs, fixed deposits. Or interest is the amount of money that is charged from borrowing money, and this will be for any kind of loan agreement. Our interest rate is the percentage used to calculate the amount of interest, and interest rates are written for example, 5% PA. That PA stands for per annum, which means for per year. And that is how we calculate our interest. The principal amount is the original amount of money invested or borrowed. And this can be thought of as our starting amount. Our accumulated or total amount is the final amount which is earned or owed at the end of the time period. A great general formula is the total amount equals the principal plus the interest. Put a star around this because you'll be using it quite frequently. Then the time period is the length of time that money is invested or borrowed. And this is given either in months or years, depending on the scenario. Let's do a quick exercise. So. Jimmy took out a loan of 50,000 Rand for his college fees. What does that 50,000 Rand represent? You've got it. It represents the principal amount. He would be charged 6% per annum over five years. So that 6% per annum simple interest is our interest rate. And the five years is our time period. Determine the total amount owed at the end of five years. So that total amount, do you remember what it's equal to? It is equal to the principal plus the interest. So before you start any exercise, remember to identify the key values. Simple interest, the definition. Interest is calculated only on the principal amount of money that is invested or borrowed. This means that our interest will remain the same, and that is key. So it doesn't matter what the time period is, our interest will remain the same. So let's look at a worked example. Sally invested 500 Rand into an account. 500 Rand is my principal amount, which yields 10% per annum simple interest. That is my interest rate. Calculate the value of her investment after five years. So the five years is my time period. And they're asking calculate the value. So they're asking for our total amount. Let's answer this work example by means of a table. We have got year one, two, three, four, five. Our starting amount at the beginning of each year the interest and the total amount at the end of every year. 
So if we start looking at our interest, our interest can be calculated by interest is equal to a percentage times by the principal amount. So if we need to calculate it, our interest rate was 10%, so it's 10 over 100, times by my starting amount, principal amount, is 500 Rand, and that gives me 50 Rand every year. So if you have a look at your table, you can see that irrespective of the year, my interest is 50 Rand every single time. So let us calculate what is the total amount after year one, so my total amount is equal to the starting amount, 500 Rand, plus 50 Rand equals 550 Rand. You can see that that 550 Rand is now the starting value at the end of year two. To calculate the total amount at the end of year two, we then have our 550 Rand plus 50 Rand equals 600 Rand. That 600 Rand then becomes the starting value for year three. And that's what we need to do for each time period as we go along. So a general formula again that we can use to calculate the value at the end of each year. So in this case, year five, our total for year five is equal to our total from the previous year, year four, plus my interest. So my year four was 700 Rand at the end, plus my interest of 50 Rand. So my total at the end of five years is 750 Rand. So we have answered our question. Second part, use your table above to draw a graph to illustrate the growth of her investment after five years. So let's just recap. Before sketching a graph, we need to set up an X and Y axis. We need to have a relevant scale and we need to have labels for our graph. So if you were setting up this graph, let us have a look. We need years. So since they're talking about five years, we have one, two, three, four, five years. And then we need to know the total after every year. So we can see our total amount is 500, 550, 600, 650. So can you see that for our interest and for our scale, we are going up by 50 Rand every year? Remember, our interest stays the same. And you can see that our starting value, our principal amount, is there on my y-axis at year zero. Just another point to note is that they have shown us that they have broken the scale with that little zigzag there because we are not interested what happens um, below that, below 400. So they're just, in other words, zooming into the part of the graph that we are interested in. So if we just need to recap simple interest graphs, we can see that our interest remains the same. We're going up by 50 Rand each year and that means that we will always be working with a straight line graph for simple interest. So make a note of it. So now that we've completed our worked examples on simple interest, let us now practice our skills with exercises in the next video, Simple Interest Part 2. Thank you for joining us for the Grade 12 Maths Literacy video. We here at the Answer Series Look forward to guiding you through the rest of Simple Interest Part 2 in our next video. So, see you soon.